I'm in love with fishing and fishing's what I do. And if you wanna try them up, I'll take you fishing too. Maybe in the morning, in the day or at night. It don't really matter, I just wanna get that bite. We may catch a limit or maybe just a few. But even if the fish don't bite, just being out here do. We may fish the ocean or river running free. And if you catch the biggest one, it'll be alright by me. Yes, I'm in love with fishing and fishing in my life. So grab your phone and go with me. This is the life of a fisherman wife. Let's go pull them in. <laughs> hey guys, this is your girl Linda with the Life of a Fisherman Wife with the guy she always does it with her fishing is. What's up? Uh, guys, this is the last day of our little getaway. Yeah. Um, and why we say it's a getaway is because it's like three hours away from home. Uh, and it's too far away to drive and not really too far away to drive back home But we don't like driving back home on the same day. So we just make it a little weekend thing. So we call it a little getaway yep. uh, But guys if you like uh, Anything like crappie fishing bluegill fishing saltwater fishing anything in between uh, This is the channel for you So why don't you hit that like and subscribe button for us and so that you be notified when we upload the next video yeah. Uh, but guys, today we're going to try to get up on whatever that's biting. It is cool out. Well, I ain't going to say cool. I'm going to say cold. Fish and everybody say cool. But well, I'm going to say cold. Let's see what the temperature is. Uh, put it on the thing. You want to guess? Uh, I said, like I said, I said about 38, 37. 30, I said 44. I want to fish this hole right here, guys. All right, put it over here so I can show them. I don't know fish. if I can do that. Let's get on the Oh, it might not do it anyway. Like I said, all right. I'm going to go. It is 46. I was close. Oh, he says 46. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. I see we want to fish over there, guys. I pass by here every time we come down here, and I don't go, I don't fish. But well, there's a truck over there now, but we may get it next time. Because I got to go get her coffee before she be grouchy all day. That's what she told me. So. I did. He's going to say, <laughs> I say, are we going to get coffee? And he was like, no, uh, we're going to go fishing. And I was like, well, we'll be cranky all day. And that's and I, the said, truth. I said, you're going to be in the truck, so it won't, it won't affect me. <laughs> he did. He said, you're going to be in the truck, so it, you know, who cares? And I was like, I do. I want, I want my coffee. Just give me coffee. That's all I require. Just coffee and I sit in the truck. Or, and he can fish all day to sundown. I was so. going to mess with a guy. And I knew we were going to pass by a stove before we got to the fishing hole. So she just won't be getting no hot Starbucks. She'll get some, some cold Starbucks from the, from the uh, I, I don't mind. And she don't mind that. As long as you got coffee, see happy. All right, guys, we'll see you all out there on that water. Are we scrappy the other day? Got him on that pink and white. Got him on that pink and white this time. I decided to go with a different color today. I, I still got that uh got that uh ice jig out there and I still got that uh wonder bread color out there. But that's what it is. Yep, little pink and white tip with a wax worm. How long do you think he is? I couldn't tell you about eight. Yeah, about seven and a half, eight. We're gonna see. <clears throat> We're not keeping him. He way too little. Can you shoot me on the button? Oh, he eight and a half. He just a skinny eight and a half. You want him or not? I think you gotta keep nines and higher, huh? It's whatever you would like. We just get started. We're gonna let him go. We're gonna get him a free pass. No, I didn't. I believe them bluegill went not crap. Ah, this one nice. The Wonder Bread got this one.
Let's see what this one is. I'm scared to lay him on here because he might flop off in the water, so I'm kind of budge in my hand. Oh, yeah, nine. He going where? Well in the butt. <laughs> Wanna come out that truck and get you some of this? Too cold for you? All right, guys. That's one for the day because I throwed that first one back. I'm gonna go back out there and see if we can do that again. Guys, yesterday I was catching them right in here. The day is way out there. I don't know if you heard that. So, I'm gonna catch this out, that, this out there and show you where, where I am. Actually, I caught the first one over there by that stick. But I threw way out there and I got two bites and, and got one. Way out there. Alright. Not a fast bite. Slow bite is better than no bite. I thought he hit that, but I want to do it. This is a big one, yeah. Sure, it's cold. Thumbnail. All right. All right. I'm going to try to do it this way. Blue gear, eight and a half. Ten and a quarter. My first two feet, boy. I looked over there and it was. Now, guys, let me show you something. This one here is a lighter jig, so I got a shot of weight above it to get it down. So when this one hit the water, it stands up. This one here. It's got a heavier jig on it. So this one here lays like this. When it get a bite, it shakes or it just stands up then. So there's two ways you can detect a bite. This is a crappie barber. That's a rocket, uh, a foam, a foam uh, barber, not a rocket barber. All right, let's get back out there on it. Explain the, the uh, reason you use a crappie barber. so fast. If a float is more buoyant, then they can feel that when they start biting, they can feel that, that tension sometimes, and sometimes they'll let it go. So they feel less resistance from that bobber. That's what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay. And, 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 and it's more likely chance that you may get it because uh, the less resistant they feel from that barber. Especially if you're not holding it in your hand. If you're holding it in your hand, you, if you're holding it in your hand, you can, you can set that barber and you see that. But if it's laying down like this one was, and uh, you don't see it till it's already standing up, you know, he might have just a better chance of him letting it go. Guys, this is a lake. This is a lake that has no size limit. This is a big one. This is the biggest crappie of the day and yesterday. I don't care, I don't care if I get my shirt slimy. I don't care. You gonna give him some tummy time today, huh? Tummy time. I keep reeling it in because with that wind blowing, that slack get in that line, and that line get underneath some of those branches, even though the barber is not underwater. And when you get a bite and set that hook, I lost the fish like that yesterday with the line up under those branches, it just kept going down and got tangled on up and I lost one. Now the one I caught yesterday was 11. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see what this one is. I think this one more than that. This 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 might be a twelve. This might be a twelve. Yeah, I don't want to get hung. I lost three jigs yesterday. I'm gonna try not to lose any today. I'm scared, I'm gonna drop this boy. I'm scared. I'm scared. Eleven and three quarters. Well guys, we was a little scared yesterday. We didn't get many, we thought we were gonna have a skunk. Until we started catching a few yesterday, so I figured I said, you know what? I'm gonna go back where I left off at last night, and hopefully they could they still be in here instead of coming in here later in the day like they did yesterday. All right. Guys, like I was gonna say, is this lake doesn't have a size limit, but we like to keep them at a certain size. We don't like to keep them too small. And if they're really huge, guys, we were throwing back too because those are our those are the ones that will help the next year. This is not the uh, spawning yet. This is probably staging, right? Yeah, they're staging. Yeah, they're they're trying to stage it's to spawn. Still in the 40s, and uh, if it's just not making it to the 40s, and the ice just leaving off, the water is lower than that. So. Uh, once the water warm up in the 50s, then they'll, they'll start spun. I think like 55 or something like that. But right now, that water still probably, if it's 44, 46, that water probably still 38. I ain't mean to cut y'all, go ahead. No, I'm good. I was coming to the other side. You already got him up. Oh, yeah. Okay, just gonna put him in a bucket. I do have a boat, 
But I'm standing on this log here because it's limbs all out through here. And uh, when you throw from the bank and pull back in, a lot of times you get hung up. Now I do, I do get hung up out here too, but uh, I can see the limbs and stuff in the water a little better. Plus I know fish like to hang around structures. So I can walk up, this limb is pretty stable. I can walk out on this limb. I can fish all around out here and I can see more snags. Uh, but I do have a boat, but we are three and a half hours away from home. It's cold. I didn't really want to bring it with me because then she can't fish, but uh, she is sitting in the truck, so <laughs> I could have brought it, but, but at least if it warm up, she'll be able to get out here when it warm up and give them a try. So that's why I'm standing out here on this log. You, you don't have to, you can get a boat and pull up in here and you can fish straight down and you probably could, I probably could catch a better fish, a more fish. But uh, you never know where they're gonna be at. Sometimes they be enclosed, sometimes they be out. And this is a good way to get out from the bank and throw out even a little further uh, without being in the boat. I might've got clean on that one, y'all. He, he didn't hit it no more. I'm bringing in Texas. Yep, I did. So I think bluegills have moved in. So I'm going to tip this with a, uh, see my line trying to go up under that uh, log. So I got to, that's what you got to watch out for too. Your barber be way out there, but his limbs in here and the water push the uh, line under the limb. And then when you set the hook, that tension from the fish and your rod won't let that line come from under that limb. And so the fish got to come all the way under that limb and try to get out. And that's when you get hung up a lot too. So you have to be careful for that too. Guys, you all want to know what's so nice about when you're fishing, you meet wonderful people. We just met this guy. His name is Jeff Wallace Speaks. So here's his card. I don't know if you all, can you see it? This is his card. Uh, he even have a QR code on the back and his website. He's a motivational speaker, guys. Uh, and what's so nice? What was so nice about it is that you know we got to talk, and um, he was saying how he uh, go around do motivational speaking, how he read books, and if you're into reading books, uh, uh, how he kind of, you know, talk about the different books that he has read. And um, he was a, a college professor and he has learned the ins and out about college. Um, so uh, I'm going to pass it on to my son because my son, well, both my son, my oldest son wants to be a motivational speaker and maybe he can watch him and learn some tips about how to do that. Uh, my youngest son is a, he loves to read and uh, he loves if he read a book he loves to be challenging to the next person who has read that book he want to know what did you understand from that book you know this is what i got out of that book and uh, i think that would be great for him so guys if you are into books or you into motivation and speaking or if you just need motivation in your life and you need somebody to pick you up guys i advise you to uh, follow um jeff wallace So here's another family that Fish and Aid is talking to. <laughs> That's the biggest one of the day. <laughs> little large mouth. Large mouth. Yeah. He's a lot bigger than the other one.
That look like a nice one. So guys, I know you all have heard of the superstitions about a banana. So we bought bananas. So Fisher is, so I didn't get a little hungry. He said, um, so should I eat the banana or would it be a superstitious? So he chose, well, show, show what you chose instead of banana. An apple. I ain't taking no chance. He said he ain't taking no chance. So I eat an apple. <laughs> so guys, tell us in the comments if you think, uh, or even if you heard that bananas are uh, bad luck when you are fishing. No, they said on boats. Right, they said on boats that you're never supposed to have a banana on a boat. I don't, I don't believe it because I just take them with me all the time. But some boats superstitious like that. Some people just firmly believe in do not put a banana on their boat yeah. if you do you and that banana both can go <laughs> uh but fishing is well i'm not going to take a chance I'm, I'm gonna eat this apple and we're gonna call it a day <laughs> plus i ate a banana the other day i'd rather have an apple apple food too that's Psych. that's what you say <laughs> uh, well guys i don't know if i finished my statement before but there is no size limit on the fish here there's not a size limit on the crappie nor the uh bluegill uh there are other fish like bass and northern pipe and walleye if they're in here there's a size limit on there but the panfish any panfish that's in this lake has no size limit but for us we just don't like to keep the very small crappie we rather keep them i keep them eight he said no he said if they're not nine to ten he said he's not going to keep them. So, that's just him. Um, but he is the one that has to clean them. So, little man over there stuck. Fishing is just like, okay, I ain't helping. <laughs> he will. <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, he put um, that rosy red metal on there that Wallace gave us because he was leaving and he said that he was just gonna let them die. So, you know, uh, he gave them to us and we really, really appreciate it. You know, anything that you give us, you know, to support this channel, we really, really greatly appreciate it. And I wanna thank T. Ray. He sent us the money for our boat seat. A big shout out to him and, him and Nikki. We really appreciate anything that you all do for this channel because everything that we do comes strictly from our pockets. Uh, it's not like we're making a whole lot of money on YouTube because we're not and we do this because we love it There you go. Oh, and you let it get away Trying to eat an apple, eat an apple. So it's, it's you touched a banana you thought about eating that banana <laughs> um, But guys just kidding um but yeah, anything that you do to help us out on this channel, we greatly, greatly appreciate it because everything comes strictly from our pockets, from our jobs that we work every day from, you know, it's not from YouTube. So um, whatever you do, like I say, it is greatly appreciated. Uh, from I can remember from being in the very first beginning, uh, Yvonne Fryson sent us a, a stand and I will forever, forever remember that because it was our first thing that someone sent us on this channel. And guys, it just, it melted my heart because, you know, I didn't think that it would ever, you know, people would care enough to do anything like that. Not for us. Um, people who are just starting and trying to make this thing work for us. Uh, but guys, we really appreciate it from her to um, Treva. Treva was the next one. I think that we got something from Treva. Then it was Larry, Larry Bruler. I think that his name is. We got something from him. And then it was um, Miss Mary that stays in Mississippi. Um, then it was um, T. Ray and Nikki. And who else have we received something from? Uh, guys, if I'm missing you, I'm sorry. It's, it's not intentional. It's a mistake. So, oh, little guy trying to pass by. Okay, guys, we decided to end this video right here because it will be a two-part video um, because we want to show you all two ways to do these cropping. Okay, so let me show you this. These, this is the whole catch for the two-day trip that we made right here. We have some very big crappies, and then we have some very small crappies. Uh, guys, but this is how I store it. This is like, I get blue aprons. And a blue apron is a box that you get your meals out of. So we save the ice pack. If you look down there, let me see, can I find one? Here's one. We save these ice packs. And uh, we just freeze them, refreeze them. And uh, we put it in this bag right here. Here is an extra bag that I have. Um, because I get them every week. I get those every week. So what I would do with this one right here, I would just take that ice pack out of there down there. This ice pack right here, I would take it out if it doesn't have a hold in it. Um, and I would refreeze, wash it and refreeze it. But I would throw this right here away and I would uh, use a new one for it. So, but if you can see, this is a smaller crappie. So I'm gonna scale and um, Take the head off of that one. All this, mm, we don't have very many small ones, guys. That's another one. I think this right here is a smaller one. Uh, I think I'm gonna do all the bluegills. Uh, but guys, look at this bluegill right here. That 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 is a nice size bluegill. So it's this one. That one is a nice bluegill. Uh, this one is a medium size. So I'm gonna do that. But guys, I think the rest of these crappie are huge. And we're going to do tacos out of the, a portion of these. All of these were not going to tacos. We'll probably do the biggest three and to tacos. Um, and the smaller one, we'll probably just fillet. And we'll probably fry those up at a later date. But guys, let me rephrase this. On the first half of this video would be me cleaning these fish in the sink and frying them whole and I'm going to show you how to eat 
a whole crappie. You don't have to know how to fillet a crappie in order to eat it and not get bones down your throat. I'm going to show it to you like at my grandmother showed us how to do it. And these right here, I will be leaving for Fish and Ed to uh, fillet for you guys. And then we will fry those up on the second half. Guys, look at that. That That is a nice size crappie while I'm putting slime all over my kitchen. But guess who's going to have to clean it? Me. Um, that is another nice size crappie. Um, that is about a 10 inch right there. But guys, uh, like I say, I'm going to get mine all cleaned up. The one that I'm going to clean up. And I'm going to save those for fish and eat. So let me pause you for a minute. Let me get everything together. Okay, guys. Here are um, the crappie. Guys, I normally like to run water when I'm doing mine. Let me see. But I don't want the water to run and you can't hear me for the sound of the water. So let's go it like this. Because I feel like when you do it like this right here. And guys, I always was taught to do it with a spoon, not a fork. Um, I don't want these scales to, to fly up everywhere. So that's why I'm running a little water. And also, it is easier for the scales to come off when you uh, scale it with the... Um, with the on a little water so we're going to get all these scaled up and this is simply how I, how my grandparents taught us how to do it um, the scales are coming up guys let me put this in here because fish and air will be yelling at me saying you're not the one to have to unstop this sink I do so all right so you just double check everywhere And guys, you see the scales are not flying everywhere. Guys, this right here is pretty much scale. Uh, let me go up on here. I felt some here. And that is how you would do mines. I kind of feel all over it to make sure that everything is smooth and there is no scales left. So uh, you just do all of them the same way. Let the water out. You do all of them the same way. You scale them. And just like that, guys, you're all done scaling. So I'm going to get these all clean, washed up, and I'm going to get my sink cleaned up. And uh, I'll come back with you to show you how I dehead them and clean out the um, chest cavity of the fish. So my sink is clean. And this right here is where I'm going to put all the waste that I don't want because uh, we put it in here so it don't spill everywhere. And you see the scales there in, in this bag right here. Here are all the scales. We put it in this bag so that we can put it in the freezer so that when uh, garbage day comes, we can get it out because, you know, it smells if you don't. So Fish and Ed is here. So if I cut myself, he can rush me to the doctor. 
Um, but some people like to cut theirs straight down like this. I feel like Fish and Ed sat on that long, way too long to be wasting all this meat here and all that uh, meat back behind the neck right there. So what I normally do, I go behind the fin here and I just make a cut. Cut this out. I don't, I don't do that. So we get rid of this part right here. We get rid of that. And then I take my knife and I go up under the gill plate if I can get his gill plate up. Fish and Ed might be coming over here saying, girl, that's wrong. So I cut it there. I take the head off because I don't want to dull my knife cutting through that head bone. I get rid of that. Then where I took that little plug out, I take my knife and I just go right up between that fin if there's knife for cut. You know, that fin is kind of hard to cut through. Now, uh, fish if you want to sharpen my knife. Oh, maybe I got it. He didn't say that, so I guess he don't want to sharpen my knife. So then, guys, I clean this out. Get all that cleaned out. Throw that toss that away. And guys, that is how my grandparents taught me how to uh, just scale and dehead and clean out the cavity of the other fish. And guys, I would uh, wash this out. Same way with the bluegill. You just get it through your knife. And you cut like a little triangle right here. If I can see. Get your little fan out the way. I want to see how well I'm going to cut my finger. See, there go that little triangle right here. Here it is right here. The little triangle that I cut out. And then we go up under the gill plate again. Cut that right there. And some people after their fish, when they first catch their fish, some people cut that to bleed out the fish. Um, I don't know, maybe Fish and I and I do that one time to see if it makes a difference in the taste or not. Not sure. So you see, I, I lost very little meat on this fish. Very little meat is taken from the head part of that fish. Like I said, Fish and Ed stood on that log way too long to catch this fish for me to waste any of it. Yeah, fish and need to sharpen my knife. Because if that knife go through there, it's going to cut my hand. So guys, we're going to pause this so fish and egg can sharpen the knife. Guys, he's sharpening the knife. Let's see if it worked for me any. He said this is not the right type of knife to do this with. It's a little bit better, not much, but you know, we got, we got the job done with it. So, all right. Hey guys, the reason I got that way over there, cause I don't, y'all don't need to see all that, you know? So, all right. So that's how you do the bluegill. So you just do the process all over again. And guys, let me tell you this. I check my fish all the time for scales. I check it when I wash it. I check it, you know, to make sure, because, you know, you, you can leave scales. So I, I, I keep scaling to make sure that my fish is completely scaled and there are no scales on this fish. Okay, guys, we're going to get the rest of these cleaned up, and uh, we'll see you all when we're ready to put them in the frying pan.
guys, as you can see, the fish, I just washed the fish. I rescaled the fish. And guys, the telltale sign to tell whether these fish are really scaled really well is after you fry them, then you will see those scales kind of pop up on them. So uh, my grandmother did not show me how to score the fish, but Fish and Ed always scored his fish. So he just put a few little slits in it like this. And guys, this is just for it to uh, cook all the way through, all the way to, to the bone faster when you score it. it. You don't have to cut it all the way to the bone. You just put little slits in it like this. That's it. So I'm going to score all of these and then I'm going to get them um, seasoned up because these are, are whole fish and I think that whole fish need um, a little bit more seasoning on it um, than the filet ones. Guys, I'm going to rewash this one. Um, so yeah, I'm going to season them up really well. And then we're going to fry these, and then we're going to eat these whole. Uh, I want to show you guys, you know, uh, if you don't know how to fillet like me, you don't have to to enjoy uh, bluegill or crappie. They are not a very bony fish that you got the uh, small bones. They do have bigger bones, uh, but they don't have the small bones in it. So you can enjoy your bluegill and your crappie without... Um, filleting them. Alright, so we're going to get them some of them we washed up and then we'll show you how we season them. Guys, let me show you. They are clean on the inside. You see on the inside of that fish how uh, clean it is on the inside. I tried to get them very, very clean. Um, but Fish and Ed did remind me that around the lateral line of bluegill and crappie they do have uh, smaller bones so uh, but sometimes when you cook them a little hard um, they dissolve or you can you can't detect the little small bones as in it so we're gonna get all these shook up and then we're gonna go over to the skillet and you all can see um, me frying up these fish guys I have shaken up the, the fish um, I want to get it coated on the inside. So um, let me put the lid back on here and see can I get it uh, coated on the inside of the fish because I don't like a lot of it on the inside because I don't want it to be gummy and it doesn't get done. But I do want it to be enough that it cooks and it's crispy on the inside of it. So if that doesn't work, guys, I'm going to have to uh, do it by hand. That got pretty coated on the inside of it. So we're gonna, that look like it's pretty warm, pretty hot at least. Let's make sure all of them got coated on the inside. That one didn't, and that one didn't. That was the smaller one that did. Oops, I'm making a mess, as always. Okay, now that one did. Let's put this one in. And guys, do you all know the best part of the fish? That potato chip. That tail right there. That is the best part of frying a fish whole. That's what you miss out when you fry or uh, when you're doing um, fillets. So guys, that's, a, that's all that that's going to hold. I think I got about four more over there. And guys, when those get ready, we'll let you all know. That's the second batch that's in there. This is the first batch that was cooked. But guys, let me show you. But I'm talking about when you tell tell sign. And many times I went over that fish. There are scales right there. But you know in that case what you do? You pull that chunk out and you just keep on eating. Uh, but that is the only one that I noticed that, you know, wasn't scale so great. I missed it. 
telling on myself. Okay, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to eat this fish right quick. Uh, Fishing Ed is tired. He had a long day at work today, so you know it's just gonna be me showing you how to do this. He does it better than I do, but guys, we're gonna rock with this today. We're gonna have some of this because it's a quick and easy meal. So this is just some Spanish rice. All you do is just put it in the microwave and warm it up. But guys, the very first thing you do is you bite off the tail. That's the first thing. You can eat that too. You can eat that. But you take this fan right here and you take this fan out first. Right here. And guys, you got meat left on there. You don't waste that. You see it's hot. It's hot. So. And you watch out for bones. God, that is really, really good. That is some good fish right here. So, and then you take these, you see why I scored it at? Right here, where I scored it at? You just take chunks from it. Like this. And guys, there's nothing but meat right there. And then you relook at it to make sure there's no bones left. I don't see any bones. And then you wait till it cools so you don't burn yourself. So, mmm. You got little ones, and they want fish. All you do is you um, get the meat from the tail right here. The meat from the tail, you know, would not have any bones. So you just break that tail off, and even though you don't think it have any bones in it, you still check that meat for that, that child. That is how my grandparents used to do for us. And then you take this, and you eat it. So guys, that is how you eat a, a, a bluegill or a crappie that you don't know how to uh, fillet. And you can still enjoy your, um, your, your fish. Um, so guys, I'm going to put some hot sauce on here, and get that rice all cooked up, and we're going to have our dinner, and we're going to ask you to make tomorrow better than today, and until next time, until next time, God bless, and good fish. I looked over there and fish in the air for him to correct us, but he didn't. He didn't even look back. He tired, tired. So guys, we'll see you on the next video. Peace. We out of here. Now that fishing's over, sun is getting low. Yes, I caught a big one, but I just had to let him go. Yes, he was a nice one, he was the biggest of the day. Show sure felt mighty good to me just to watch him swim away. May not ever see him again, this I know is true. But now that he is swimming free, you might catch him too. Glad you came to fish with me, yes it was really nice. Maybe we can go again on the life of a fisherman's wife. Until next time, God bless and good fishing. Peace.